How in the hell has Superman not had a decent video game yet? It's been almost 20 years since Superman 64 declared eternal dibs on the title of worst game ever, and we still don't have a halfway decent Superman game. We've gotten a quadrilogy of great Batman games, screw off Arkham Origins was fun, and someone managed to fart out a good Iron Man game on the Wii, but the name Superman still makes developers fudge their pants in dread, apparently. Anyway, today we're looking at Superman Shadow of Apocalypse on the GameCube, based on Superman the Animated Series, much like Superman 64 was. Look at this. The biggest quote on the back of this game's box is, Superman has never controlled this well. There is no way in hell that line was written with a straight face. Saying this controls better than a flaming sack of pig vomit doesn't tell you anything. I've heard nothing about this game, so, um, here's hoping it at least can be contained to a single episode. It's not a high watermark to clear, but I'll take it. The story picks up with Darkseid, who's anonymously given Lex Luthor some mysterious technology that'll help him kill Superman once and for all. Near as I can tell, all the voice actors from the show return from the game, with the glaring exception of Darkseid himself. Michael Ironside was iconic in the role in the animated series, imbuing the role with menace and authority while sounding otherworldly. He's the gold standard that even silly incarnations of the character have copied ever since. I am many things, kal -El. You couldn't begin to imagine half of them. But for now... I shall take the role of Executioner. Their replacement dark side sounds... lame. The brilliance is in the victory, Cantor. And now it is time to test the capabilities of this Earthman. In Teen Titans Go, he's voiced by Weird Al Yankovic. I am not kidding. Getting back on topic, the game cuts over to Superman fighting and apprehending Metallo. The animation and graphics look pretty good as far as recapturing the animated series. They even got the stiff and stilted fight scenes right! After the game more or less announces that Metallo, Parasite, and Livewire will be our villains for the evening, you're dropped into a tutorial where you fly around Metropolis. And honestly, the game controls great! The left analog stick moves you through the horizontal plane as if you were walking, while the right stick controls your height and lets you strafe. You hold the right shoulder button to fly forward, but you retain pretty good maneuverability, and you press it all the way down to take off as fast as you can, which the game calls the speeding bullet. So the first hurdle has been cleared. It's easy to move, the controls are intuitive, and it's never a hassle to get where you want to go. Holy shit, flying in a Superman game doesn't make you hate life! Savor your moment of triumph, Superman. But remember... Victory has its price. In the second level of the game, you start fighting humanoid enemies called Interbots, robots with guns and shit that attack Superman en masse. I can't help but think of the Interbots as a scathing pot shot at Superman 64. Titus likes to whine to anyone that'll listen that Warner Brothers ruined that game with a ton of unreasonable demands, and the one they like to complain about the most is Superman not being allowed to punch real people. As if to call out Titus on their bullshit, Superman just says, Oh hey, the goons are robots, and it moves on! That's all you need! It's not some insurmountable burden! And if you think I'm reading too much into this to remind you that I reviewed Superman 64, consider this. If you enter the words pea soup into the cheat menu, it triggers what's called low resolution mode. It doesn't affect the graphics, but it adds thick green distance fog to all the levels. There is no way in hell that's not a Superman 64 reference! Anyway, the second level is a combat tutorial. You have a basic punch that deals good damage, but you can't punch while moving, and once the AI realizes that it can walk, the punch becomes useless. Flying into enemies doesn't deal damage, and super speed is the only power not accounted for in the game, so you do most of the fighting with superpowers. Double tapping Y fires a heat blast that deals good damage, holding A and B while airborne hurls Superman at the ground for a shockwave that just devastates whatever's nearby, and you can lock onto an enemy and ram them with the speeding bullet, which sends vehicles tumbling and knocks airborne enemies out of the sky. All these powers draw from one superpower meter that fills fairly quickly on its own. It's well balanced. You can use Superman's powers on command, and they're neither overpowered nor insultingly useless. You can also hold Y for heat vision, X for super breath, and hold A and B on the ground for the vomit spin, where he spins around real fast and knocks away nearby enemies, but none of these attacks do much to the enemies. I get you're supposed to strategically use the weaker powers to conserve power, but I can't think of a situation where you're not just better off waiting two seconds for one of the useful abilities to reach charge, especially since it's piss easy to just float around the top of the room recharging health and energy. Yeah, probably about a third of the combat is spent just floating out of range of the enemy attack, stalling until you have the energy to launch a new superpower, since most of the basic attacks suck ass. Considering punching is useless and stage hazards are severely limited even when they're present, I'm all ears if anybody has a better method of fighting dudes to spout. And total honesty, you can throw objects at enemies, I just completely forgot you can do that. 
by and large, the game has a pretty decent combat system full of attacks that are fun to use. You've got the Heat Blast for stationary enemies, Speeding Bullet for vehicles and airborne enemies, and Shockwave for general ground enemies. Each battle involves surveying which enemies are nearby, trying to pick out the biggest threats, and thinking on the fly which power would be the most efficient for clearing out large encounters. But there's one really big problem that drags the decent combat system down into mediocrity. A lot of the game is combat, and you spend the entire friggin' game fighting almost nothing but interbots. You see these mooks you fight in the tutorial? Yeah, probably 98% of the game's enemies are these basic goons endlessly copied and pasted into huge monotonous hordes. For four hours you just fight wave after wave after wave after wave of these standard innerbots with very rare reprieves. Some of them have bazookas, some of them self-destruct but are easy to avoid, and very rarely one will have a jetpack or there will be one or two missile spewing vehicles thrown in, but it just gets to feeling like one fight repeated about a hundred times times. They try to keep the combat fresh by sometimes adding a time limit or making enemy groups really obnoxiously large, but you still do the same thing every fight. Float around dodging fire until you've recharged an attack, fire one of the three powers that work, and repeat for four hours. The game just has way too much emphasis on combat that's too bland and monotonous to be worth all the attention. You spend most of the game indoors, just floating around a room peppering the same enemies with ranged attacks, and it sucks because the precious few times that the game lets you go outside so you can actually fly around and act like Superman, the game gets fairly fun, but those levels are very few and far between. The tutorial level is the only stage in the game where you're flying around Metropolis and watch the rest of the damn video before you rush into the comments to correct me. There's one level where you fly around fixing a dam, which is a good Superman thing to do, and there's an outdoor level at Lex's base, which... Okay, it's just fighting more robots, but at least you get room to breathe. The flying controls are great, but you barely get to use them. These levels are glimpses of a much better game you'd rather be playing. Flying around saving people instead of circle strafing the 500th thinner bot you fought that day, slowly watching a meter tick up. It's especially strange because there is an open world metropolis map in the game where you can fly around, but I think you can only access it with a cheat code, and it has no objectives other than a shooting gallery and a shitty glorified ring course that you have to unlock with a different cheat code, so they had a big metropolis map ready to go, and they didn't do anything with it. There are also some nagging issues with the controls. A lot of the double tap actions feel like they don't always work. Picking up enemies so you can super punch them I almost never got to work. In fact, picking up objects in general just feels kind of glitchy, with grabs being delayed, sporadically not working when flying, and not working if you get caught on anything during a pointless walking animation before Superman will actually pick something up. You have no ability to control who you're locked onto in combat, so if there's a guy with a rocket launcher and you'd like to kill him first, well, your only option is to keep pressing and releasing L and just hope that the lock-on hits them by accident. It's just such a good thing the enemy groups are ginormous to where you can't prioritize any targets, isn't it? And Superman's X-ray vision is such a royal pain in the ass to use, I'm glad they just kind of forgot about it as the game goes on. You have to hold Z to enter first person, then hold X, and then you'll see through maybe five surfaces across the entire game with no indication that anything's changed, and there's only three points in the game where it has any remote use. They seriously might as well have just left it out. Honestly, despite a good and honest attempt to give the game some doses of variety, the game just started to feel monotonous, even across a fairly short runtime. Maybe if the story were better it would have held my interest, but this game's story is just as bland as they come. Superman the Animated Series could never hold a candle to Batman, but this script would still embarrass the old show. The game opens with Darkseid giving Lex Luthor the schematics to the Interbots and leaving some guns for him in a warehouse. Superman tries to stop the pickup, but gets knocked unconscious by one of the guns. I guess this is supposed to mean the guns are strong, but animated series Superman was nerfed so badly a stiff breeze would knock him flat on his ass. When you're shot by the magic super guns in the actual game, they just kind of mildly irritate you. The special guns operate on fusion, and Lex's scientists can't build them, ran out of polymerization cards I guess, so Lex stages a catastrophe at a dam that Superman has to fix while the Interbots go kidnap scientists. I really don't know what happens next. Lois and Clark figure out Lex is behind the kidnapping, so you spend four levels breaking into Lex's headquarters and rescuing scientists. Only they're not the real scientists, and I think the whole thing was just a waste of time. Three of those four levels are just fighting endlessly clones. Innerbots, by the way. Hands down the most infuriating level of the game 
game is the arbitrary forced stealth level where you sneak into Lex's hideout as Clark Kent without being spotted. You have to sneak around scientists with a camera that you can't control and which takes a few full seconds to swing around every time that you turn. I promise you will run smack into guards while just trying to get into a spot where you can see if they're there or not. You know what would be really helpful right now? If Superman could run like really fast so nobody here could see him, or if Superman could just fly over these mines that you have to awkwardly blow out of the way in which inevitably stack into one another and roll all over the place while you hope they don't slide into you from off screen. There were several points in Lex's hideout where I just ran around in circles because the game doesn't explain how levels work. You're told to dodge through a laser security fence, but it just knocks you on your ass when you try. You're told to find a fuse box, and you're just supposed to instinctively know the fuse box blends into the wall texture and is the one thing in the game that doesn't appear as a target and can't be locked onto. You have to stop a self-destruct system by pushing into pillars, but unlike everywhere else in the game where you interact automatically with shit like this, you're just supposed to instinctively know to push and hold A with Z prompting. The admittedly fun outdoor level you have to break into six guard towers and just take a wild ass guess how you get into these things. Fly through the glass window, punch open the glass window, go through the plainly visible and marked door, heat vision the bad guy through the window, freeze the glass with super breath? No! The only thing on God's green earth that gets into these towers is ground pounding the 100% solid ceiling! I could have flown around for hours and never gotten that. The game keeps doing that. It withholds one simple piece of information from you, and you run around banging your head against the wall until you guess at it. Towers aside, I really like this outdoor level where you're protecting civilians from robots, mainly because you're timed and there's an actual sense of urgency to the combat forcing you to hurry up, but these helicopter enemies take a metric shitload of attacks to... Whoa! So, um, if it's not clear what's going on here... I'm punching an enemy with a ton of health, I'm locked on to said enemy, and the cameraman's gone high off his tits. Can you help Superman? Superman! Can you help? Can you help Superman? Superman! Can you help? Help! I'm in danger! Superman, help me! Hey, Superman! Help me, Superman! I am killing robots as fast as I can. Please stop with the annoying screaming! Can you help Superman? Can you help, Superman? I'm in danger! Help! I need help! Yes! I see you! Please stop talking! Can you help, Superman? Superman! Can you help? Can you help, Superman? Superman! Can you help? Why does every whiny scientist have the same whiny voice, and why did they hire the most annoying whiny voice actor in existence for all of them? Can you help, Superman? Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Shut the hell 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 up! The man will fall. Lex Luthor's activities must be closely monitored. So with the entire attack on Lex's base having been pointless, a sky beam appears over Volcano Island. Superman did it before it was lame. And Superman finds a secret base with the missing scientists. They're building a reactor to... I guess power more guns? And they have a portal to... Actually, they never explain what the hell this thing's doing here. It simply is. The second one of these levels, you have to fly through four tunnels of enemies and jets of fire and carry crates of coolant to stop a reactor from melting down. This would be a great dose of variety after four straight combat missions, except they added a five minute time limit to where it's pretty much impossible if you screw up twice. You have to go straight up and down shafts with no way of seeing or avoiding the flames, and rocks will fall on you and break the containers out of nowhere just because the game hates your face. Then you fight Kanto, the dark side minion who I think made the inner bots. He fights you in the exact same tank you fought a dozen times up to this point, only with a shitload of health. First boss of the game, and you just knock him around while he tries to hit you. At first I thought my attacks weren't hurting him because his health wasn't going down when I punched or shot him, but no, every boss's health bar is just larger than the indicator is. You just punch him a lot and he dies. Kanto reveals that the inner bots are breaking into Stryker's Island, the prison where Superman's enemies are held, releasing all the inmates along with supervillains Parasite, Livewire, and Metallo. So Superman has to charge into his prison and rescue the staff and guards while fighting his greatest villains. And then Batman said, hold my beer. You fly around the prison fighting wave after wave after wave after wave of inner bots. This whole time you're supposed to protect four guards. One got stuck in a wall, I'm not even sure how I got him free, and at one point all of them froze and I couldn't get them to budge again. They just sat there and no amount of punches in the head nor eye lasers to the crotch would get them to move. 
couldn't even kill myself or the guards to fail the level on purpose and reload a checkpoint, I just had to start over about 25 minutes in. And the killer is, I'd actually made it to the end of the level, the stage just glitched and never ended. Joy. So first you fight Livewire, a supervillain made out of electricity and the picture that appears in the dictionary next to anorexia. Bruce Tim didn't know what women look like. This fight has three phases. First she walks over bridges and you shoot switches to dump her into the water. Eventually Livewire remembers she can fly and you start blowing her into water flowing out of the ceiling. Finally you have to blow up some locks in the ceiling to flood the room. All this would be easy if the camera didn't hate you. Livewire fires a ton of blasts that track you incessantly and it's so finicky trying to get the lock on to target anything in mid-flight you basically have to sit still and let her hit you to land any hits on your targets. And then inevitably you just start flying circles around the room to refill enough health to hit the rest of the targets without dying and it's just so tedious. I don't know what's more annoying, the persistent homing attacks or Superman's five second long shrieks of pain every time you take a hit. God, shut up! Then Parasite copies Superman's powers and you fight him on the ground in one square block in Metropolis. You're supposed to protect a gold truck, but I just kept ramming the speeding bullet up his ass and he died in like a minute. The Interbots free Metallo and give him a gun and then you fight him in Lex Luthor's office where he fights you with his bare hands instead of the gun. I just punched him a lot, pinned him into a corner on accident, pretty much kept him stun locked, and just wailed on him for a few minutes until it was over. At one point I got him standing on one of Lex's couches to where he couldn't hit me at all. It's over, Metallo! You have the high ground! Metallo flees to a junkyard so you can punch him in the face while he's largely helpless some more, until finally he loses the rest of his skin. Now he runs around firing a shitload of projectiles at you and there's pretty much no way to fight him except firing heat blasts. So just like the rest of the combat, all you do is spend an eternity floating around waiting for your powers to recharge enough to land enough hits on him while he impotently flails at you. I know you can blow him into the compactors for massive damage, but I didn't need to. Not when he periodically gets frozen into invisible walls. Hey, Metallo! Anybody home? Hello? What are you, rebooting? Okay, he's one hit from dead. I'll just finish him off with a punch. What the hell happened? Did I die? How? Oh, you sack of shit! You kill Metallo, Superman says he'll get Lex someday, and the credits roll? That's it? That can't be right, we haven't fought Darkseid yet! We haven't even encountered him yet! I thought the whole game was building up to a battle with Darkseid! His planet's name is in the frickin' title! That can't be it! And I shall be watching both of you closely. Very closely indeed, Superman. There has to be some secret ending. Let's see, Game Facts, Shadow of Apocalypse... Oh. There is no secret ending. The game just cuts off after you fight Metallo. What a load of shit! Am I wrong here? Was I the only one expecting that the game would end with you going to Apocalypse and fighting Darkseid or something? You use one of the greatest villains of the DC Universe and hands down the biggest villain in the cartoon, and you don't do a damn thing with him? I'm gonna dork out on you for a second. In the TV show, Darkseid was forbidden from invading Earth because of a peace treaty with New Genesis, so he tries to take over or destroy the Earth through subterfuge or covert operations, but even so, you're seriously telling me that Darkseid's entire plan for taking over the world was to give a few slightly above average guns to Lex Luthor and just hope he comes up with a way to kill Superman? And Lex's entire plan, in turn, is just to give the slightly above average gun to Metallo and hope that he comes up with a way to kill Superman? Jeez, this is the kind of evil plan you turn in when it's 3pm the day before Christmas break and nobody in the office gives a duke. Superman's Shadow of Apocalypse isn't bad, but it just feels half-assed. The combat is dirt simple and just has you fight the same goons over and over, the story is totally weak sauce and goes absolutely nowhere, and there's just not much variety to the game. Shadow of Apocalypse is probably the best Superman game that's ever been made, but that is not saying very much. There was a time when people thought Batman Vengeance was a good game, I always hated it, but whatever, because we didn't have a definitive Batman game to compare it to, and when... If Superman gets a good game, I get the feeling this will be in the same boat. You can do a hell of a lot worse, but unless you're just desperate to see Superman not completely suck, this really just isn't worth your time. And speaking of doing a lot worse... Oh shit, it's gonna be a while. Oh well, I am a patient man.